Hello, Stroud. Hello. I've heard you're very awake here, very, very switched on. Yeah, so, um, so hopefully you'll, uh, you'll enjoy the show. Uh, it still says, I'm um, still doing wake-up calls because they started about a year ago as talks. I was doing them on the streets of Manchester in the northwest as, as like little speeches and vignettes and taking the mickey out of mask wearers. Nothing insulting, just using comedy, using a bit of humour. Um, because that's really, that's the secret of our success will be maintaining that morale. Not buying into the BS of the, the, the system. It's putting on an awful lot of pantomimes. Everything you've ever been told is a lie, every, or just wrong. And pretty much everything you see, even in alternative media, is pantomime. The only thing that you that is true is what you're feeling. So it's best to avoid the pantomime and just go with your feeling and do a bit of gentle research just to know how to move forward into the future. We don't need to go down rabbit holes. We've all gone down them only to learn that we didn't need to go down them. Uh, well, there you go. That's life, isn't it? You know? You don't know until you do it. So, um, yeah, People's Lawyer here. Um, and I've uh, been the People's Lawyer since last November when I was on the pr uh, promenade at Morecambe Bay. And I was addressing the crowd. They said, David, give us, a, give us a little speech. So I said, hello, everyone. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. Because I was Joe Nobody in those days. I was just a, I was just a guy with a microphone. Um, and I said, uh, my name is, and I was about to say my full legal name, which is probably, you know, the police watching, it's a bit of a mistake, isn't it? But um, so I said, and I thought, no, they don't need to know my full name. So I said, I'm, uh, I'm the people's lawyer. And that's how it started, November 2020. Yes, we're still in 2021. And it turned into a website and a series of talks, and now they're non-stop. You know, I'm on a non-stop series of talks. They may slow down a bit because um, on Friday we're doing a big filming and this is kind of, there's going to be two dress rehearsals. One here and one in Glastonbury. So this is the full Monty. It's a good two hours. It may be, I'm warning you now, if you need a, a comfort break, have it now. Um, because by the end of the talk you'll be, there'll be a massive scramble to the toilet. Um, so this is the big one. It's been evolving for a year. Uh, if you've, is that, who was at my last talk in Stroud, anyone here? A few of you, you'll, you'll find it radically different, okay, because what I'll tell, I'll tell you what I've done. I was focused on law bits, but now um, the, the, when it goes online, it will be called full disclosure. So there's not just law, there's health, and there's not, not just health, there's education, or as my cockney friend says, education. Right? Because that trinity is holy. You can't have law without education, and you can't have education without health. Because if you're sick, you don't want to learn anything. See what I mean? It's a holy triangle, holy trinity of personal development. So, still doing them, enjoying them, loving every minute of it. Hovis, as I call it, because every time I call it COVID, I either get deplatformed or arrested. And so my question to hands up who's been arrested in the last 18 months? Who are the heroes? Good. Uh, I would like to respectfully suggest to the others that you're not leading a full life right now. Okay, it pays, it literally pays. It's a get-rich-quick scheme. If you're unlawfully arrested, they're all unlawful arrest because this is the uh, agenda. Uh, and uh, you find a suitable solicitor, they can claim on your behalf £3,000 an hour for being in a police cell or £1,000 a minute if you're classed as vulnerable. So, and also it, it, it absolutely melts the minds of the police because they're like, why, I don't understand why I didn't sign up for this to lift, you know, ordinary citizens. This is China, this is Soviet Union, this isn't Britain. So, this, and the police are starting to um, meet us halfway, just a little bit, little signs, you know. They take the masks off during the rallies, for example, and they chat to the crowd rather than threaten them with arrest. There's a protection card uh, when the next lockdown comes. Well, you want to make 
create because that created a real pandemic. Now we've had a false one. First pandemic was um, what I call it. Uh, well, I, I won't reveal what I call it because I think there's a screen about it. Uh, and um, what I'll do now, I'll shut up. No, I won't shut up because I'm talking. Huh? But I'll I'll move on to show you what to expect. <laughs> Right, there's five parts to this full talk. Part one is something to ponder, because I like to give attendees something to think about, to warm the brains up so they can cope with the rest of the information. I don't know how awake everyone is or how much research you've done and how much you know, but there's absolutely guaranteed... Well, let me put it this way. I did a talk recently on a field... It sounds a bit desperate, I don't know. I did a talk recently on a field in Sussex, and uh, the... There was a lawyer in the audience, and on the next day it was his turn to talk, uh, to speak, and he said that what David said yesterday, I've been, he said, I've been a corporate lawyer for 40 years, I only knew 1% of it. See what I mean? Everything we've ever been told is a lie or just wrong, yes? Part one, something to ponder and a bit of truth bombing. The truth bombing is about uh, health issues. Part two, two of the great deceptions. There's so many, I had to just pick two of them because they're relevant to this. What we're doing tonight, really, apart from truth bombing, is uh, status correction. We are coming to the realization that our false status has been foisted on us and it's um, changed the direction of our lives. You know, It's given us a career. And if you look at career as a verb, to career means to lose control. Yeah? We'll do a bit of wordplay as we go along. Part three, your remedy at law, which you'd expect from the people's lawyer. Part four, the ultimate antidote. So this is how you take this knowledge and build up your resilience, your health, uh, so that you can apply the knowledge. Because if you're, you know, if you're literally, if you've got chronic fatigue or um, chronic anxiety, it's very difficult to stand up to a bully, isn't it? Yeah? So you need to be well to fight. And this is a war. They don't send the sick into battle, do they? You've got to be well. Yeah? Part five, glimpsing the future and future proofing. And I think that's it. Only five parts. Right, let's crack on with part one. Give you something to ponder. Question one. Were you a live birth or a stillbirth? Can't see any stillbirths here. To be fair, no, so you all look pretty loud to me. But where's your proof that you were a live birth? Well, I've got a birth certificate. Yeah, but look on the birth certificate. It just says not evidence of identity, not proof of identity. So where's your live birth certificate? Ha ha. Well, when they um, take the, when the baby's born, they just say, "Excuse me, missus, got to run some tests." That's uh, legally speak, double speak, cabal speak for we're going to take the baby's DNA and uh, footprint it and send that off to the Vatican. And the Vatican will have the live birth certificate. Okay? Uh, we'll look at one in a minute from Australia. So in this country, we're not very privileged for these things. We get the, um, we get the in effect, the death certificate. Your government uh, birth certificate is basically your, the, the, the certificate of incorporation uh, for you to enter the system in commerce. It's, it's a commercial instrument, directly, as, but it's got nothing to, to do with the baby being born on the land. Another question, which we won't go into, we'll just leave it as a question. Do you live in a home built by a bank? Does anyone live in a home, not funded by a bank, built by a bank? No one. I've asked this question to 3,000 people. No one said Yes, yeah. No, you know, banks don't build homes. So then, pray tell me, why are you paying a bank for the privilege of living in a home, or your home, or anyone's home? I'm not going to go beyond leaving that with you to ponder. Take it home with you. It will start to crack open your brain. For those whose brains need cracking open, we've all been through this process. I'm not going to give you anything that I haven't been through myself. You know, you go, holy shit, right? Don't get angry, just stay calm and use that information, use the information of how you've been duped to give you motivation to move forward. Uh, 
Question three, what did you learn at school? In an answer beginning with F and ending in all. <laughs> Nothing. Sweet Fanny Adams. Schooling has been for some time and is now absolutely categorically 100% academic. Now this is, this is genuinely uh, an expertise of mine, if you'll forgive me, because I wrote a book on education, education as my friend said, called School No Place for Children, there's copies there. So a lot of research has gone into that statement, what did you learn at school? Uh, schooling now is pretty much 100% academic. Look in the Oxford English Dictionary, definition number two of academic is, quote, of no practical value, close quotes. If, honestly, if you, you know, you have to be careful when you're waking up, because if you wake up too fast, you know, you just, you just, like, no one told me any of this, I've, why have I fallen for this, you know? <clears throat> Number four, how are obligations created? We're going to answer that one for sure, because that's the that's the you know the, the, the meat and drink of this talk. Just think about it now. I'll give you a clue. They can't be imposed on you, so they have to be created with your complicity, consent, contract, cooperation. Call it what you like. This is consent, contract. Now, CO on every word. That's that's quite yeah. Uh, Legally, not biologically. So one woman went crazy the other day when talked. She said, you know, she started talking about vaginas and stuff. Not biologically, Mrs. Legally. Are you a man, woman, or a person? <coughs> legally. Well, you're not a man or a woman legally. I can tell you that for nothing. That's also going to form a massive chunk of this talk. Question six, what are the only two causes of chronic disease? And we will look at this one. I'll leave you to ponder that because we are going to look at that as well. Question seven, who can legally get into your home without your permission? We will answer that one as well. Uh-oh. Now, the good news is for the actual filming, uh, I'll be using a different computer. This computer is dying. So please bear with me. It restarts randomly. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just continue the theme generally. Everything we've ever been told is a lie. So, for example, when you hear virologists saying, well, you can't talk to me about viruses because I'm a virologist. But the last person to know about viruses will be a virologist. Just as when I was a lawyer originally, I didn't know any law. And my medical friends don't know anything about health and well-being. And the ones that do have quit the medical profession. This is one big... The elite can't afford for us to know what they know. You know, like the royal family don't do uh, pharmaceuticals. It's all homeopathy and naturopathy. Because they know that pharmaceu is the ancient Greek for poison. More wordplay. When the Bible said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, it, the word witch had been inserted over the word poisoner. Because the original idea was to stop pharmaceutical snake oil salesmen killing people for profit. Still um, warming up and restarting. Let's hope that that's the last one, because I'll have to prepare some ad libs, won't I? So, what else can I tell you? Um, people say to me, uh, David, are the military going to come in and pin us to a wall and inject us? No. That's your inner demons getting the better of you. I've had military come to my talks and say, we're not asleep, we're not stupid. If they ask us to do anything that we consider to be unlawful, we ain't going to do it, you know? They'll be mutiny. Um... Fingers crossed. Like I say, we've got a backup plan if we get another unwanted. Okay. 
So we're going to answer who can legally get it, because again, this is part of the nightmare scenario. People who, because remember, we've got about one third awake and active, or kind of active, one third dithering, and they dither because they're worried about people breaking into their homes, taking the kids away, closing their bank accounts, um, losing their jobs, so they're dithering. And then you've got one third, roughly, who, as from our point of view, are write-offs. Um, and we shouldn't be wasting energy on re recalling them back into the fold. It's the ditherers that we, if we focus on anyone, focus on the ditherers. And that colour brochure, that colour leaflet, is a very good tool, uh, to, a resource to give to a ditherer because it asks some very innocent little questions and the answers are deceptively enlightening. So it won't give them too much cognitive dissonance, but it will sow seeds. Right. Who owns gas, electricity and water? Thank you. We do. The planet is a creation. Prime creator created. So it's like a cosmic trust triangle. Prime creator that some people call God created a space and entrusted that space to an entity called Gaia or Sophia or whatever you want to call our mother. And our mother said, okay, I will look after this for the benefit of its of my, our children, boys and girls, humans, call us what you want. So we are, so Prime Creator is the creator, grantor, and trusts the sacred space to Mother Earth, Gaia, she holds it in trust as trustee for the beneficiaries. So the idea that we need to do anything to take something from the planet is nonsense. It's there as a gift from God, Goddess, as part of the triangle. The beneficiary receives. Yes? Beneficiary said so the work ethic is a non-divine principle. Yes? It's a satanic principle. Obviously, service to others is beautiful. But the work ethic is a twisted satanic version of that. Uh, and the five, six, seven day week, some people work seven days. I, I know a locksmith who works seven till ten, seven days a week. And I mean seven in the morning till ten at night, by the way. Um, so we own gas, electricity, and we own everything on the planet as beneficiaries under this trust, cosmic trust triangle. <laughs> Number nine, what do you know about complex post-traumatic stress disorder? Has anyone got it? Everyone. Everybody's got it. <laughs> Why have you got it? In virtually all cases, not maybe all cases. Where, where did you get it? Okay, but more the, 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 the biggest culprit? School. school, thank you. Yeah, schooling. It's, that's what it's there for. It's to break you as, as, a, as a soul, to fragment your soul. You go in, a master of existence, and I'll come to that point later on, um, full of confidence, creativity, and uh, you come out knackered, low self-esteem, happy to take any old job just to keep going, so that you're ready for their system, yeah? Because if you came out far more than you went in, their system couldn't cope. They couldn't boss you. You'd be unemployable, like me, you know? They couldn't break me. They got close, but they couldn't break me. Um, what is the essence of evil and what is the true opposite? So what's the essence of evil? One word. It's not serial killers, psychopaths, the essence of evil. Not the definition, but the effort. Inversion. Essence. Eh? Inversion. Inversion. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Greed. What, what, what's the essence of tyranny? Thank you, it's another CO word. Control. And the book was written by someone. The English version it will cost you two grand, because it was a very limited print on. 60 pages. 
The, the author spends 60 pages defining um, evil as control. And what is the true opposite of control? Freedom. freedom. So good is free. So um, control equals evil, and freedom equals good. Pretty much. So that really defines the essence of what's going on on the planet. You have an evil force which wants to control us, and we have the counterbalancing urge and need to be free of that control, which is good. Anyone, with that, anyone without that urge, it's not that they're not good, but they don't know what freedom and good and how good and evil work, or they're asleep, or both. So here's your living. Uh, this is Victoria, Australia. This is an actual proper live birth certificate. So I don't know if you can see it. It says um, living or stillborn, and they've put living in, um, they've written it in handwriting. So we don't get the privilege of that. You can ask for your live birth certificate. You can apply to court, county court, I assume, maybe the high court. Uh, and there's a second way which one of my students says he's going to tell me about but he hasn't told me yet maybe a, di maybe a direct application to the Vatican I don't know, I'm just, just guessing but, uh, why would you do that? Uh, well you don't, you don't need to uh, just curiosity because okay. you, you're breathing you, you, you're proof that you were you know could you use it? Like in a driving situation, like things got over um, you could, you could possibly use it, yeah? You just say, well, but then again, you just, if you know that you are a living man or woman, why would you need a piece? Look, <laughs> look at this, it's living proof that I'm a, I'm a breathing, you know? It, it may well get you section, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? There's certainly things. So you're holding up a piece of paper to prove that you can hold up a piece of paper. How does that work, Mrs? You're coming with me. Right. Um, truth bombing. Disease as transmissible pathogen. This is the health bit. And I feel as though I have to um, include this because, you know, truth has to be rounded. If it's not rounded, you, you feel as though you've missed out on something. Disease as transmissible pa pathogen. Well, let's have a look at some of these questions. Can I transmit my headache? If I had a headache right now, could I just whoosh, come near you and go, do you fancy my headache? Whoosh. There you go. Chronic fatigue, oh, I'm feeling a bit of shit. You know, don't come too close to me, you might get chronic fatigue. Asthma, oh, I bet my breathing's gone to pop, don't get too close, you know? It's nonsense, isn't it? So why do we think that we can tr transmit chestiness, coughs, fevers, and any of the POVIS symptoms that they're talking about, which are just symptoms of flu, most of them. Um, okay, these are symptoms. Symptoms are the effect, not the cause. You can't transmit an effect. Think about it. You can't transmit an effect. I'm having more kids in my kids' class all got chicken pox at the same time. They all got chicken pox at the same time because uh, I'll, I'll look in, I'm gonna, there's a screen about this, yeah? Um, but somebody got it first though, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Huh? True. Someone got it first. Yeah. Yeah. And someone didn't get it. So this infectious, contagious nonsense has to be blown apart. Uh, I subscribe to terrain theory of Monsieur Antoine Béchamp. Um, Louis Pasteur's germ theory was rejected by Louis Pasteur himself on his deathbed. But the, um, the emerging pharmaceutical company, there should be a, a collective boo every time I say the word pharmaceutical. It's alright, it's not. Yeah, no, you, you don't have to, but I'm just saying that all to me. Um, but, um, Louis, uh, but the pharmaceutical industry, the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, says, uh, no, we can't do terrain because people will understand that they are responsible and they are at cause for their own health. We are at cause for everything in our lives. The rest is ego, poor me. 
So Pasteur's theory was adopted because it was a good business model. Everything is business. Everything is business. A teacher recently retired from the teaching profession when she went to a convention and heard the children described as the product. It's all business in their world. Terrain theory versus germ theory, food for thought, okay. So the villagers have got sick and they're all blaming each other, but in fact it turns out they all drank from the same poisoned well. So you're not looking for contagion, you're looking for the toxin that was in the well. Yeah? So in other words, we're looking for, I'll, I'll cover this, you know, we are looking for a toxin. We're not looking for, you know, because the, the elite want us to start blaming each other and fearing each other. We have to proudly say, no, thank you. I fear no one and I blame no one. I am responsible for everything that happens to me, for everything that I experience. Nobody else. Viruses. No virologist will tell you this. Viruses are dead cell debris. They're dead. You can't be infected by something that's dead. Now, if you've got too much of this debris in your body, it can, that's called your viral load. If your viral load is getting a bit too heavy, you get the, your good bacteria will come along and eat it. They are the dead cell debris eaters. So just think of the implications. You've got all this, you've got all this dead cell, all these dead, the dead cell debris, and you've got your good bacteria coming along to mop it up. But we're, t we're eating and drinking so much shite that we're a bit low on good bacteria. And if you take antibiotics, without the balance, counterbalancing probiotics, then your very low, dangerously low, pro uh, antibiotics can kill you. And they do kill. And it's because the viral load, it gives the viral load free reign, because the virus is, is, as I'll show you on the next screen, cells die either because they, because I've called viruses dead cell debris, so cells die either because they are supposed to, which is natural cell death, called apoptosis or because they have been poisoned which is necrosis so whether they have died naturally or died through toxicity toxemia they are lying there debris on the floor of your cells or outside the cell now um, in desperate need of being mopped up by the good bacteria that will munch them have them for breakfast lunch and dinner yeah? <coughs> um, but if we are very toxic, then we have a lot of dead cell debris. But if we haven't been looking after ourselves, we won't have the resources to mop up this dead cell debris. So if they add on to all that, another toxin like something dropping from the sky, something in the drinking water, something in the food, something in the injection, we are literally a we're, we're, like, we're keeling over already, and it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. So you never die of COVID, whatever COVID is. You die with COVID, because you are dying anyway. And that's why most people who die, not everyone, we're dying anyway. The average, in fact, COVID is a blessing. It, it guarantees two years on your life. The average age of people dying allegedly with or of COVID is 83, and without it, 81. So bring it on. A question, if terrain theory is correct, here we go, how do so many people appear to get infected at the same time and in the same place? Two main answers, one, they are not infecting each other but affecting each other, the way trees do. When trees, when a particular tree is being assaulted by a badger or a woodpecker or whatever, or a rodent or something, or a, or a you know, little critter, it sends out an emergency signal to the neighbouring trees. Why would humans be any different? Something is going on, something that scientists haven't discovered yet is going on. We're sending out signals, pheromonal type signals. The same signals that menstruating women send out when they work together. 
Come on, girls, let's all work together and menstruate together. Come on. Yeah? That's what's going on. So, it's not physical contagion. It's, it's biochemical, pheromonal influence. I think the word is influence is probably the best word. Based on quantum entanglement. We're all connected on a quantum level. So this is quantum influence. Um, and of course, if it is a, a base toxin, a basic toxin, we're all sharing it. We're all breathing the same air. We're all drinking the same water. So the astute ones will make sure that they get to the seaside as often as possible um, and do as, as many detoxes as possible and filter their water. But we'll come to that in the last section. Sorry, did I, did I take it off too fast? Okay. Got to be quick on the draw. Just, just say photo alert and I'll slow down. If we are looking at a mass poisoning, what's the poison? If, if you had to name one poison that is the cause of alleged COVID, one poison only, what would it be? Yeah, that on a cycle, no, but if it were something uh, biochemical or physical. Electromagnetic smoke. Possibly. Yeah, what about. <coughs> they've arguably been dropping it from the skies for many years. It's absolutely guaranteed in the injections, it's absolutely guaranteed in the medical surgical masks, possibly also in the swabs. And it, it's, it's um, a nanoparticle that can provide an interface between the artificial and the organic. If it aims to control the organic, which is us, uh, then look no further than graphene oxide. And there's now a move to place a graphene oxide in water filtration processes. But I have a water filtration expert who says, David, don't panic. Well, I'm not going to panic. He said, uh, we don't know, we can't be sure, it could just be a very clever use of graphene oxide. I think he's been a bit naive myself personally, but there you go. So don't draw any hasty conclusions. So what we have is a pandemic of toxicity, toxemia, nutritional deficiency, and, and you hinted at it before. Psychosomatic. Yeah, yeah, but the effect of all this nonsense would cause. Fear. Thank you, stress. Yeah, fear, stress. Fear reduces the. Yeah, yeah, uh, you've, you've already, have you looked under the, uh, <laughs> eh? the bonnet? <laughs> uh, and I regard the first wave anyway uh, as a global panic attack. The next wave will be a real pandemic of um, fallout from injections. But what we've had so far is a global panic attack from the Wuhan pantomime, from um, all kinds of pantomimes, yeah? Um, and, you know, the theory that uh, there was bat theories and bioweapon theories leaked nonsense. Absolute rubbish. Yeah? All pantomime, distractions, designed to bring on the global panic attack. To cause the stress that lowers intelligence. You can't think straight when you're stressed. Your neofrontal cortex says, ta-ta. You know, your, your um, objective, rational thinking, strategic thinking goes A1, and in comes the fight or flight reptilian, help, poor me, I'm, I'm under attack, give me something. Oh, I tell you what, stay home, stay safe, keep a distance, wash your hands, don't hold your granny. Thank you, that'll do. And keep watching the telly. Thank you very much, now I feel better. Because you're in, in an infantile state. It lowers resilience on all levels. If you're in stress, your resilience goes down, immune function goes right down. Because remember, if we're in a good, if we're in wonderful state of homeostasis, we're, we are virtually invulnerable. We're not meant to be sick at all, ever. That's not our, that's not, that wasn't God's or div, the divine plan. But some interloper has got in the way and convinced us to self-harm. 
and that's what most of us have been doing most of our lives. You know, we're just a bunch of self harmers that need to stop it. You know, and we'll cover that in the uh, section four or five. I can't remember. Uh, and obviously, stress also. Don't, well, not obviously. Um, stress always lowers empathy. So the mask wearer is not because they're, they're stressed. They're more stressed than we are. We're stressed enough. But they're so stressed, they've got to put a mask on to hide the stress. But you can tell in their eyes, you know. Um, they're not going to say, they're so stressed, they're not going to say to you, can I shake your hand? Well, two metre rule. So they're not going to, you know, but can I just stay two metres, uh, uh, safe distance, and just say, I, I, I so admire you not wearing a mask. You must be so brave and resilient. I wish I had your courage. They're not going to say that because they're not feeling any empathy. You're a threat. And you're showing them up for the cows that they are. So, empathy out the window from the stress. Something else lowers intelligence. Well, the book's a clue. Oh, there's loads of things, but there's something that. School is school. Yeah, exactly. School. If you don't believe me, if you think I'm being biased against the system, then have a look at this. A NASA study of creative genius carried out in about, I think from 2005 to 2015, took 1,500 boys and girls, it was longitudinal, and, and watched them, studied them, got them to do little tests over a 10 year period. And at the age of five, 100% classified as creative genius. Five years of schooling later, genius level was down to 50%. And five years after that, by the age of 15, 99% brain dead and 1% still a genius. And that's pretty much, you know, that kind of fits the adult population. 99% not a lot upstairs and 1% are absolutely smashing it, you know. It may be 97.3, it may be 95.5, I'm just exaggerating for an effect here, you know? Um, but that's what schooling is meant to do. It's meant to take the genius and turn them into a bit of an idiot. Okay. And, a, and a, a compliant, obedient idiot. And then schooling has done its job. And you can see how the dots can be joined when you take the compliant, obedient idiot and, ask, and say that it's the law and you need to do it. Oh, right, huh? Yeah? But there's more. Do you recognise any of these? So we're talking about post complex PTSD. Fear of ridicule, fear of authority, fear of speaking up. You know? That's also what schooling does to all of us, not just to the compliant. Yeah? It was very interesting. Uh, when the um, first, you know, when Ho Hovis first arrived, we're out on the streets and I'm walking around with a megaphone. And people I, I try and give it to someone else, no one wants it. You know? So you get a bit of a reputation as a mega mouth, but if no one else wants to speak. And then I've got some equipment, got a microphone. Come on everyone, come and come and take the microphone. No takers. Eventually, after about six months, I had one taker. And then two, then three, then four. But it's like pulling teeth. You know? The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressed saw is the mind of the oppressed. That's their bit, Steve Biko. For those of you who don't know, Steve Biko is a freedom fighter in South Africa. Uh, it's our mindset that's their biggest weapon because they haven't got any weapons. <clears throat> they certainly haven't got any big weapons. Right, humanity's at the crossroads, we're currently carbon based, why do you think they keep saying, talking about zero carbon emissions? We emit carbon, zero carbon emissions, it's coded language for human extinction. Um, so, while carbon based Homo sapiens is facing possible extinction, we're offered two alternative routes out of that scenario. One is downwards into Silicon Valley, 
to become transhuman via the injections and the boosters that will never end. You surrender your soul. Um, the injections do, tr uh, do cause soul entrapment. I've got that from various uh, psychics. <coughs> um, by the way, someone, another psychic medium was at my talk and said that she's already getting readings or visitations from, be from beyond saying, we took the jab, they murdered us. Tell people not to take the jab. Yeah? So the, the way out for those who are ready is crystal, you know? Bash carbon hard enough, it becomes crystal, doesn't it? Diamond. So we're getting a good kicking because we need a good kicking to become crystal. Because if we got too smug and comfortable, we would stay in carbon and we'd be wiped out. Yeah? So you need, that's why I said get yourself arrested. Get yourself a good, it's not, you're not, not going to get beaten up, you know? You'll get treated, you'll have your own commode, <laughs> yeah? And um, it's all very gentlemanly. What happens to my 13 year old when arrested? <laughs> well, you have a contingency plan. You just. I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. Believe me, I wouldn't be arrested in my Right, okay. But if you do. I it, just think of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, but the thing I'm is that. Many. I'm one of many. One of. If you have a situation that would appear to prevent you from being arrested, then you can preempt that situation with, you know, sort of a coded message. Uh, or say, look, I'm going to a rally to your boy, is it a boy or girl? Uh, she's 13. She, right. Say to girl, if I'm going to this rally, people do get arrested at these rallies. If you don't see me by 7 o'clock tonight, I'm not coming until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah? But it's nothing to worry about. You'll be home the next day, worst case scenario. Um, so, crystals are going to be the Homo Angelicus. They're already being born. You can tell them a mile off. They, they kind of can't, some of them you can't tell if they're a boy or a girl. They're quite androgynous. Um, they're the ones with special gifts. Chinese have got children that can read with their armpits. The Russians have got children that can fly. So all kinds of special gifts are coming through. Homo sapiens, David Ike has been saying this for 30 years. Homo sapiens, human race, get off your knees. You've got wings, you can fly. But if you went to school, they got clipped. Or if you've got dysfunctional parents, they got clipped, you know? So replace your clipped wings and put your originals back on. Uh, and we'll be Homo angelicus. So we'll have angelic qualities. So that's why, if you want to join that club, you need to let go of all the bad habits that have come from the matrix, all the addictions, all the negative thoughts, all the anxieties, all the fears. They're not yours, they're baggage. You can let them go in minutes, hours, days, weeks at the most. Because you have the power to say, that was then, this is me, I'm going forward, I'm not looking back. I'm going that way. I'm going, sorry, I'm going that way, not that way. Yeah? Everything is so much easier than they've made out. Some people go, I've got a, a family relative that goes, has been in talk therapy for 30 years. That's called milking it. That's narcissism. Yeah? You can deal with your issues in a very short space of time. It's about the will to expand, grow and move on. Yeah? Uh, and we're heading for ascension, the planet's ascending and we want to be with our mother as she grows and expands, so why not, eh? Anyone up for a bit of ascension? Yeah? Well, it's already happening. You don't have to even think about it. It's going to happen to you. It's already happening. Hence, some of these, some of these symptoms, symptoms, some, not all of them, are symptoms of ascension. Weird symptoms. Yeah? Like funny sleep patterns and brain fog and all kinds of, you know, they are symptoms of ascension. Not all of them, because some of them will come from darker causes. Um, 
So this is a war to desecrate, destroy, or control your holy land. So what's your holy land? It's you. It's your body. It's your multidimensional being. That's your holy land. It's not Jerusalem. It's not Mecca. It's not Moston in East Manchester. I don't know why I've mentioned that. Anyway, it's, it's, it's you. That's the holy land. So Armageddon is taking place inside you. It's the battle that you are fighting between your higher self and your lower self that's plagued with demons and negative thoughts and bad habits. So you win that battle, you win the Armageddon, and you're a tick. You've scored a goal for the team, team humanity, as ascending. That's it, it's not an external battle. You, you know, don't look for Armageddon on the, um, on the um, planetary um, landscape. You won't find it. <clears throat> and the Holy Land is also obviously the Earth itself. We're a fractal version of Mother Earth. So there's a plan, and it's been going on for a long time, to destroy, desecrate, control planet Earth itself. Yeah? We're just being dragged into it now, full on. Yeah? We've been kind of bystanders in the past because they didn't have the technology to, uh, to desecrate us fully, but now they do, and so we're, we're being dragged into... Uh, but, you know, Mother Earth is uh, going to reward us for standing by her and uh, doing the work. Part three, two of the great deceptions, so we're back in legal lawful land now and a bit of finance thrown in. Deception one, the government's true status. We don't have a government, we haven't had for many decades. Uh, and this is the story behind it. Governments went corporate when nation states were bankrupted. So remember that our timeline is 80, 90, 100 years. The Cabal timeline is many thousands of years. So they plot along their timeline. We don't join the dots because we're not around long enough to do that. But we're researching now, so we are joining the dots. That's what they're worried about. They were worried about us joining the dots and seeing what they see. <coughs> so, many years ago, 1930s, they bankrupted the USA, took its gold and silver off pe people, and the bank said, right, we've got your gold, you've got nothing, but we need some collateral. And, we need, and the, what are you going to do about it? And the government said, well, if we go corporate, we can provide some collateral if you fund our corporate activity. That was the plan. So no longer sovereign nations, but legalese, legal corporations. Yes, that was the idea. So gold and silver were withdrawn as money, so we haven't had any money on us for a long time. We're, we're making payments, meant, anything ending in meant, is means it's in your mind. Meant from mente, Latin meaning mind, and also mentir in French meaning to lie. The banks agreed to fund nations that were prepared to corporatize. Yeah? Corporatize, the word in the middle of corporatize is corpse. <coughs> so, any nations that were prepared to, in, in effect, drop dead and, uh, and become the living dead, as it were, or just dead entities, uh, were the banks agreed to fund. The erasure of corporate, yes, raising the debt through the power of prayer, yeah, and yeah, and uh, dark magic, yeah, yeah. So the Republic of the United States of America became U.S. Inc. and the United Kingdom became UK PLC. So Boris Johnson is not a man running a sovereign entity known as the United Kingdom. It's uh, he's a corporation, Boris Johnson Limited. CEO of UK PLC, which is why um, if you want a say in how the country is run, you don't get it as a citizen with a vote. That's a joke. You get it by becoming a mega, a megalithic corporation and a stakeholder in Boris Johnson Limited and UK PLC. That's how you get a say. So there's no point in writing to your MP. And 
The only point in protesting is to make a, an optic for the ditherers. Because it won't make a blind bit of difference to the so-called government. A million people protesting about Iraq. Protesting anyway is only done by children. You protest when your parents say, time for bed. Protesting means you're going to bed early. Yeah? It doesn't change anything. So when I go to rallies, I go to a rally to make myself visible, along with the thousands or millions of others, so that we have something for the ditherers to chew on. Mm, that's an awful lot of people. I wonder what they're doing. Government is now corporate, but what does this actually mean? What does corporate actually mean? Well, in the 19, in 1942, the US Supreme Court uh, ruled, or um, gave a, an indication of what corporate means, uh, the implications of it at law anyway, in a Supreme Court case, US Supreme Court 1942, known as the Clearfield case, and it produced the Clearfield Doctrine. When private com commercial paper is used by corporate government, government loses its sovereignty status and becomes no different than a mere private corporation. Let's translate that. It means that UK PLC and US Inc. have the same legal status as Marks and Spencer's and McDonald's. If you got a letter from McDonald's saying that you are required by our law to come in and buy two Big Macs and fries three times a week, you'd laugh it off, wouldn't you? But if you get a letter through the door saying you are required by law to fill out this census, it's different, isn't it? But there's no difference. No difference whatsoever. Not at law. It's all kidology. As such, government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern private corporations, i.e. the laws of the sea, which is the laws of contract. Rules of contract, I should say, really. Because as we'll see soon, there's only one true law. Um, the laws of the sea, the laws of commerce, contract. If they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance, I'm going to show off in a little, um, there you go, specific performance. Thank you very much. Um, specific performance, it means basically you agreed to do A, B and C, you only did A and C, you're therefore compelled to do B, because you agreed to do it. So in legalese terms, they would say you are required by law, but in real terms is you are, re you are obliged in equity under the terms and conditions that you agreed to in the contract. Do you see the difference? They make it sound as though you are required by law simply because they've created a law, allegedly, and that you are subject to it. All pantomime. In reality, you're only required by your own contractual obligations with a corporate government. So we're already halfway to answering the question, how is an obligation created? Well, by contract. Yeah? But we'll come to that more in a minute. All right. Um, so, if they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance, and again, specific performance, and a remedy in equity that says, you agreed to do ABC, you didn't do it all, you're going to do it. But they make it look as though it's a legal obligation, which they can foist on you. All it is, is a, an equitable um, requirement to fulfill the terms and conditions that you agreed to. Right, so the government, like any private cor cor corporation, must prove itself to be the holder in due course of a contract or commercial agreement between it and the one upon whom demands for specific performance are made. There you go. No contract, no obligation. They're a corporation. Uh oh. Right, plan B. Right, has everyone got one of these cards? So let's just go through. Um, the strategies if you're under threat of arrest. Strategy number one, all these strategies work 
They're not guaranteed to work because you may be a targeted individual or the police in question may be... Um, oh, I wonder if I can cancel the... Oh, no, it's restarting anyway. Okay. Um, you may be a targeted individual or... And, they, and they, they're going to lift you, whatever. Or it could be you could be in a big rally and they've got the paramilitary trained to... Uh, to um, to do some damage, but then they wouldn't be arresting you, they'd just be beating you up. So, so really this is reliable stuff. Right, and they've all been proven to work. So, if you feel under threat, you stay silent and turn your back. I can give you a classic anecdote. Um, I was called to do a talk like this at a gym in Preston. Stand back up. Gym in Preston and the police got wind of it and they, 30 of them, arrived before we did. We were 120 and so everyone was nervous. The police were nervous because they were heavily outnumbered and they'd been told that we were dangerous extremists. Um, they looked just like you. And I'm looking around for a dangerous right-wing extremist and I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Yeah? So. And the, so the police were obviously trained to think that. We're also on our side, we've got issues, because we've heard terrible stories about police brutality. So a lot of us were nervous. In fact, 30 went home within one minute. So we were down to 90 within one minute. Because you know, we were nervous thinking, well, they're here to beat us up. Well, they weren't. And the police thinking they're here, that we're there to beat them up, and we weren't. So after a 10 minute standoff, it's obvious, and we're now getting, we're now having nice, friendly chats, and we're opening them out with sewing seats. You know, I was saying things. Do you realise who's here tonight? So we've got lawyers, doctors, dentists, librarians, mothers, parents, boys and girls. You know, we're people. You're people. We can see that you're people behind that uniform. We can see that you, you're men and women. We have a common enemy. So. Um, so we're still standing there, not, no one knows quite what to do. And then someone said, um, David, have you got a table? And I said, well, yes, I do. So they said, well, could you get it out and do the talk? And it was cold, it was um, a cold October or November day. And I said, all right, I shall do that. So I set the table up and I had it behind everyone's backs, behind the, the crowd's backs. I said, right, I'm ready, and they all turned around to me, turning the back on the police. And that was the police gone. And after half an hour of the talk, half the police had gone. After another half an hour, they're nearly all gone. Turn your back, stay peaceful and silent, police go. Yeah? Because most of the time, they think you're about to create some kind of breach of the peace. Um, Why did they go? I'm sorry? are sending out a message of we do not wish to engage with you. Okay. You have no... If you're here as a policy enforcement agent, we're not contracting with you. And if you're here as a peace constable, we are showing you our backs. Apparently, you, if, if, if there's a, a dog, dangerous dog, you turn to the side. So if it's a dangerous police, a dangerous... Yeah, you turn your back. That means we're not here to fight. We're not here. We're just... We're gone. Yes, show your back means you're not engaging, either in commerce or as a threat to the breach of the, to, to the peace. Right, there we go. Let's um, crack on. So, if the government need um, a contract, if we can only be obliged by a contract, and it can't be any other way, because if we could be obliged without a contract, tyranny would already have a right. Yes? So we are governed and policed by consent or contract. Someone in a high position said that when she was Prime Minister. Who is that? Theresa May. Theresa May said that. So whenever you see, we'll look at all these final points in a minute, but whenever you see you are required, it is the law. No. That's. Uh, the big lie, that's Joseph Goebbels speaking. Tell a lie big enough, repeat it often enough, people believe it. It's policy. But more about that soon.
Corporate government does not make law, it makes policy. It's that simple. Policemen are policy men. The full title of police man and woman is Corporate Government Policy Enforcement Agent. Full title of a teacher is Corporate Government Curriculum Enforcement Agent. Full, full title of police officer is Corporate Government. This is my perspective. Now you won't find this anywhere in, in written down. Corporate Government Policy Enforcement Agent. Teacher is Corporate Government Curriculum Enforcement Agent. Doctor is Corporate Government um, Medical Protocol Enforcement Agent. The, the list is endless. Um, BBC Operative, Corporate Government Policy Disinformation Agent or misinformation agent or both. So it's policy, it's not law. There's only one law, and we'll come to that later on. Which also means that there's no such thing as legal obligation. So I'm kind of repeating myself now. If it's only policy, how can it be, how can it create legal obligation? Have some, I'm having some hilarious scenes in shops. So you go in a shop, uh, excuse me sir, uh, do you not wear a mask? I say, no, I don't do that kind of thing. Oh, you must be exempt then. Well, kind of. Yeah, I keep them guessing. So, yeah, but it's the law. And I say, just hold on there one doggone minute. I say, when it comes from government, it's referred to as guideline. Hmm? Yeah, true. Can't argue. But when it hits your CEO's desk, it turns into company policy. Mm, yeah, okay. And by the time it comes from your mouth and you're on reception or you're on the shop floor, all of a sudden it's law. How does that work? It's gone from guideline to policy to law. And then if I can be bothered, I just say, um, actually I can't wear a mask because it's against the law. <coughs> And it is against the law, as will become clear soon. And it also means that there's no such thing as mandatory. No such bloody thing as mandatory. <coughs> the government that own corporations can mandate those corporations that don't have any men or women in them. It's all... Yeah, but it's all smoke and mirrors. The corporations that don't really exist will follow the mandate because the government will give them incentives to do that. But it's for them. It's got nothing to do with us. Deception 2 all starts with the certificate of birth. And it's a deception, not a fraud, because it's a two-way street. You know, you do potentially lose a lot by not knowing about the certificate of birth. But, but it creates an entity that you benefit from, as we'll see. So it's not all take, take, take. There is a bit of give, give, give. So as we know, gold and silver were withdrawn as money and replaced by trust funds. The banksters needed collateral to fund the newly incorporated USA and from UK PLC. The collateral offered were life insurance policies taken out on our lives. So when the, when the live birth certificate hits the Vatican desk, they can say, right, we've got another one, okay, more value, more funding to make available, please, as a form of insurance, because that baby will pay it all back with dividends. You know, in application fees, license fees, fines, you know, penalties, school fees, education fees, 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 license, you know, fees. Pay it back with dividends. Um, and bills, and what, God knows what else. We are the beneficiaries of these secret trust funds, but nobody tells us. So, just as we are the secret beneficiary of life on earth, of the sacred space itself, it's, it's there for our enjoyment and for us to reap the benefit by 
learning the lessons that we've come to learn, if that's what the purpose of life is, um, then we're also the beneficiary of these secret trust funds because they are created out of thin air, because there's no gold and silver, based on the value, the perceived value of our future life and our future contribution to the cabal. The trust fund in our name is evidenced by the, our domestic birth certificate. So it's, not, so it's not evidence of us, it's evidence of the trust fund in our name. Our life is evidenced by our live born certificate held by the Vatican. An overriding principle of creation, now we're going to look at the person, because it's the person that is um, the creation of the government whose name is on the trust fund. An overriding principle of creation, whatever I create, I own. Remember that. Whatever you create, you own. So if you have boys or girls, you own them, you create them. But the government doesn't have boys or girls. The government isn't alive. Birth certification creates the person. That's how it's created, through the certificating authority. The person is therefore owned and controlled on this overriding universal principle, overarching principle, whatever is created by the certificating authority as an agent to the government, it must therefore, having created it, own it. And if it owns it, it controls it. So whatever I create, I own. Whatever I own, I control. And that should be another slide that I will put in before the filming starts. Okay? <clears throat> but what exactly is the person? So we know that it's government owned. Sorry, government created, therefore government owned, therefore government controlled. But what is it? And I just I noticed that I said what, not who. The person is the combination of the given names and the family name. So again we're looking at that original question. Hands up here who is a man, legally, a man, a woman or a person. Legally you can only be a person. That's their world. Legally is their world. Lawfully, in accordance with the one true law, that's our world. That's our earth, I should say. That's our realm. So the person is a, a legal fiction created of your imagination. It does not really exist. It's created out of thin air. Put on a piece of paper or now digitally on a computer. It has been described as an energy or entity attachment, a form of possession. It does attach to you and you absorb it as if it was yours. If that leads you to leading half or a quarter of the life you could have led without it, then it has done its job. It has possessed you. So this talk and the courses that I run and any other people that do similar things, we're, we're kind of depossessing ourselves and other people. Getting people... You don't have to rid yourself of the legal name. You have to simply be conscious of what it is. Um, and it's an it, because it's not you. So it's a, again, it's a status correction in the mind. Having created the legal fiction person, all they need to do now is convince you that either A, it is you, or B, it is yours. How do they do this? Uh, and again, pointing over to the book, the school register. They take the boy or girl at the age of four, five, six, seven. All that the boy or girl knows that they're called Mark, Peter, Sarah. Ten, twelve years later, they're Peter Smith, Sarah Jones. That's the name of the person. That's not the name of the boy or girl. They've been entrained by the process of reciting the full name with the boy or girl going, Here, miss, twelve years of that, and you've gone from boy, girl, divine offspring into corporate government, fictional creation, person, stroke, child. Clever, eh? 
that's what they do. Now, teachers are not aware that they're doing that. They can't be. And some of them are beautiful people, but they're involved in a sinister game. It creates fictional characters, as we know, called persons, the lowest rung in the corporate ladder. It creates fictional characters called parents, pair of rents. It creates fictional junior characters called children or child. It creates fictional healers called doctors. So you don't want to go to a doctor, you want to go to a healer or physician. Doctor can kill or maim you with impunity. Their only crime is deviating from protocol. Not killing you or maiming you. That's just par for the course. It's deviation from... If they offer you a naturopathic remedy, they get struck off. But if they kill you, they might even get a promotion. If they have killed you with a drug that goes on to kill others or sells well, I'm being a little bit cynical now, but it's not far off, you know? Officer, corporate policy, corporate government policy enforcement agent, don't call a policeman or woman officer. You're immediately subordinating yourself on the ship of commerce, on the sea of commerce, Clearfield Doctrine, you've gone straight into personhood. Thank you very much, officer. Uh, well, if something good happens after that, it's your lucky day. You've got to refer to them as constable. That, as constable, they are your servant. But as officer, they are your commanding superior. And you are become, you become person, property of the state, property has no rights. Teacher, fictional character, what you want, what boys and girls want are role models or life experience. They don't need teachers. Teacher, rearrange the word. C-H, cheetah. Mark Passio, the former satanic priest, said that the biggest crime against humanity is theft. And teachers are guilty of theft of valuable time and energy. Um, I don't want to pick on teachers, by the way. I'd like to pick on everyone. Employees. Um, employees surrendering their sovereignty. Anyone with a boss has surrendered their sovereignty. But it's contractual, so you are obliged because you did sign a contract of employment. Yeah? Um, what else can I say? So, if a parent says to the head teacher very proudly, I'm the parent of this child, and no child of mine is going to be vaccinated. Thank you very much. Well, that's a legalese joke. Because all you're saying is, I'm owned by the state, I'm controlled by the state, I'm the lowest rung on the ladder, I'm at the lowest rung on the ladder, my opinion and my voice is not heard and counts for nothing, so you can ignore what I've just said. I've referred to my child, my child is owned and controlled, is the legal person, so we ask property and do as you wish. The head teacher is a superior officer. She has a rank above parent and child. And that superiority was given by the registration process. Not the school register, but when you registered to attend school. You're giving away sovereignty, you're subordinating to school, which is an agent for the state. <clears throat> Uh, I've covered everything. So you don't want to be a parent of a child, you want to watch this. You cannot possibly be the legal person as it was created weeks after you were born. Something's happened to the word born there, but that works. So does that help clarify the issue? You were born and then the paperwork was um, taken care of by some random grown-ups that created the person. So how can the two beings be the same? Yeah? Does that help clarify? Yeah? Still not sure? Is Stroud a place full of silent sort of... <coughs> the quiet silent type? <laughs> Don't like to... Okay. Um, so there you go. As long as it's clear that you are not the person 
but that person is the name you've been running throughout your life. So this is a major, a major. That's why I call this a wake up call. Nor is the legal person's name yours. So you are not it. You are a fractal version of mother, divine father, or divinity, whatever. But you're not a name on a piece of paper. Nor do you own that name of the, on that piece of paper. Why do you not own that name on the piece of paper? Sorry? It belongs to the corporation. And why does it belong to the corporation? They made it. Thank you. They created it, not you. Thank you. Crown copyright. Crown copyright. They created it, and under the universal principle, whatever they or I create, I own. Whatever I own, I control. So, you may not be the legal person, you may not own the legal person's name, but you have the right to use it. It's nothing to be frightened of, which is where the common law bods are going wrong. They're throwing away the legal name, they're trying to, they're trying to own it when they already do in equity. They're the beneficial user in equity of the legal name. It's there for your benefit, that's why it's not a fraud, it's a deception. It puts you slightly off center. It doesn't drain you dry, although it does for some people. Um, you can sign on for benefits as beneficiary. Okay, but it's something, but the point is that if the system wants to own and control you, it asks you to step into the person's shoes by being the person or by saying that you, um, the person's name is yours, which is fraud on your part. Because you're, you're pretending to own something that you don't. You're pretending to be something that you're not. Yeah? Fraud by misrepresentation. Sorry, is it also correct by this one? It's fraud to use that birth certificate as identification because it says specifically it's not in it. So there's the connector. Use the birth certificate, it's fraud. Say that you are the person, fraud. Say that you own the person's name, fraud. Absolutely. But say that you have used the person's name for occasional benefits. Yes, it's not me. I don't own it, but I do use it. Please forgive me if I've made a mistake. Everything hunky-dory. How does the corporation control the man, woman, boy, girl? By inducing the man, woman, boy, girl into a contract via the legal person. So it's the legal person that the government used to bring the man or woman into alignment by contract. A contract can only be established between contracting parties of equal status or capacity. So the government, the corporate government, cannot contract with the man or woman. But it can contract with the person. The corporation and the person are both equally dead, artificial, fictional and two-dimensional. So you can have a contract between the person that you think is you, and the government, the corporate government. But the man, woman, boy, girl are alive, living, breathing souls, so they can't contract directly with the government, which is why free man on the land and common law um, initiatives don't work, because there's no contract is available. Everything is contract, business. So a legal trick is needed, in fact there are two, so they have to deceive you into stepping into the shoes of the legal person that they do own and control and can contract with. Those two tricks are known as joinder and silent acquiescence. So that's our next journey into joinder and silent acquiescence. Joinder means creating a contract by duping the man or woman into actively accepting the position of person. So they've got to get you, I mean if you've been to school you will routinely, they don't have to work very hard, the school teachers have done it for them. Is your name uh, Mr. Peter Jones? Yes. Thank you, you're nicked. Yeah? Or is your bill for two grand? Yeah? Um, joinder takes three forms essentially. One is verbal. You give joinder by answering a question. The, the biggest question that the police um, need, uh, need to get you to answer to bring them under their authorities, do you understand? Which is, do you stand under our? Do you stand under me on this matter? 
Um, but any question like, um, what's your name, what are you doing there, where are you going? Um, if you answer that question, you're surrendering your... They are now entitled to presume that because you've, you've answered the question, you are surrendering authority, you're surrendering your manhood, womanhood, and you are saying, you've got me, I am yours, take me, I am a person. That's why I'm answering the question. You don't know you're doing that, it's all, but this is what's going on behind the scenes. So answer the question, but again at school, what did they they, that's what you learn to answer questions. You, we've got to learn to be impolite, rude. Who, you can say, I don't stand Yeah, don't, don't stand on you, or I don't answer questions. So, yeah, we'll, we'll come to the remedy for this. This is the problem, we'll have the solution later on. So, answering a question to a figure of, of authority, a no-no until further notice, until that figure of authority is sworn under oath to uphold the law, protect the people, keep the peace. At the moment, they're cabal agents, and they are sworn to destroy uh, free thinkers and benevolence. Joinder is number one was verbal. Now the non-verbal joinder is by complying with a request. Uh, for example, would you step out of the car, please? Don't step out of the car. If you step out of the car. You become a person, which is government owned and controlled property. Stay in the car, retain your manhood or womanhood. If they need it, if it's a routine road traffic stop, hold your license up with a nice smile on your face. There you go. Turn your window down one inch, lock the doors. You may think I'm paranoid, but I come from Manchester. <laughs> You may have wonderful police constables in Stroud, but if you do, you're very fortunate. But I'm from the, the real world, <laughs> uh, you know. And um, but the thing is, if you can't identify with the world that I live in, then if things do deter deteriorate, Manchester will come to Stroud. Yeah, I already have. <laughs> See what I mean? So I'm just. I'm pre we're just giving you the weaponry so that you can preempt any deterioration that Stroud suffers or wherever you're from uh, on the streets. They get worse before they get better. On many levels, we're going to need the th things to get worse because the ditherers are going to have to start seeing this is enough is enough now. So we have to celebrate the aggravation or the deterioration because it's going to bring the ditherers on board. So, bring it on. Um, there's a famous story of a man who went in as a man into court and dis had the case dismissed because courts can't hear cases against men, only against persons. And the judge said, congratulations, and the man turned to go. Oh, by the way, before you go, could you take the chewing gum out to your mouth? So it went like this, and within three milliseconds, he was besieged by about eight police officers. So, as a man, he was untouchable. But as a person, I joined her, complying with the request, surrendered the manhood, converted himself into property. And property they can give a good kicking to, and they do. Joined her. Third element of joined it is remote. Opening mail address to the legal fiction is giving joined her. Don't do it. Only do it if you know how to respond. And you'll only know how to respond if you do a course like that. Shameless plug. What can I do? Um, other courses are available. They're just not as good. <laughs> and I don't say that lightheartedly. So I've had the testimonials do bear that out. Um, joined us. Right. Remote. Open email address to the legal fiction person. Now. There's another, there's, oh God, there's so much I could have included. Opening a, a, a mail address to another person, which is the legal fiction, is actually an offence or a crime on your part. Section 84, Postal Services Act 2000. It is an offence for a person to open post or to tamper with post addressed to another person. 
So you'd really be an access, you'd really be uh, committing an offence. There's another thing, sending windowed envelopes is mail fraud. I don't have time to go into this. So if you if you don't report it as mail fraud, you're uh, an accessory after the fact. So there's all kinds of beast beast inspired traps for opening their window door, you know. The safest thing to do is just return it. And we'll look at that shortly. Yeah? So these are booby traps. Windowed envelopes addressed to your legal fiction person is booby trap. And there's videos about that will give you more detail if you go on the website. Right, so that's three types of joinder. Verbal, non-verbal, by verbal by answering a question, non-verbal complying with a request, and remote by opening mail addressed to the legal fiction. That's mail fraud anyway, for reasons I, I don't have time to go into. <coughs> Silent acquiescence, a maxim of Roman civil law, given an opportunity to refute, reject, or deny something, but instead of remaining silent, you're deemed to accept it. So if you get all nervous and sit on things, then you're deemed to accept it. You went silent. Oh, okay, that's, that's how they can escalate. If you sit on it, it will just escalate. That's why they put, do not ignore, ignore this, whatever. Yeah? What they're trying to tell you is if you sit on it, they'll escalate. Yeah? Personal communication, anything they send us by post is an offer to contract. <coughs> Can't be anything else. They need us to contract. So if they send us something, it's an offer. You're happy to do business with us. Universal Postal Law allows 72 hour cooling off period or period of grace to make up our minds and serve rejection notice or notice of offer declined. So whenever you get something, so for example, um, I got a PCN on my window, windscreen, sorry, windscreen, uh, tore it off, opened it up because it's in a plastic, a plastic, you know, protective envelope. Um, and Walthamstow Borough Council tried to hand deliver it back because you can, if you can, if a council are open, you can 20, within 24 hours just give it them back physically, get a sign receipt, contract decline, done. But if you don't have, if you don't, either they're closed because of COVID or you don't have the time or the opportunity, then within 72 hours, return it and we'll, we'll I'll go through the, <coughs> the strategy about what you put on the envelope, return to sender with other things beside. <coughs> and I've just done that with a PCN in Walthamstow and uh, it's been five weeks so I've not heard back. I took it out, did what I did and I'll show you what I put on it and as I say, and it's routine now. I had a, an attendee that said that she'd been doing this for years. It's just routine. Send it back, but send it back in a timely, um, honourable manner, which is within 72 hours. And um, I was doing a little chat today, and, so, and it was obvious that they um, have a rule of three. If for some reason that you either sit on it or whatever, they give you three goes at this demand. They send the offer three times. So you've got three opportunities to to decline it correctly. Yeah, they have a rule of three. Um, if we sit on mail for over 72 hours, the principle of silent acquiescence kicks in. So there's three times of joined up plus silent acquiescence, which lead to an implied contract. Uh, we are deemed to accept an offer addressed to the legal fiction. So accepting an offer creates a contract. And for anyone who studied contract law, that's how it works. Offer, accepted, contract. And I'll give you a quick hint about mail fraud. Mail fraud. Where's the, where is the value? Someone has to offer value. Well, the value is in the postage stamp. So when you get franked mail through with a windowed envelope, there's no postage stamp, so there's no value. So there can be no contract. There's the mail fraud. And there's other aspects to the mail fraud as well. Offers to contract with the legal fiction include bills, notices, summonses. <coughs> so they're all offers to, offers to contract. Council tax bill is an offer to contract for that year. Okay, so you can just send it right back within 72 hours. Notices, I've had a notice of criminal charge. 
Um, now, they served it in a very peculiar way. They, they, three coppers from Preston came round to serve it by hand. It was a COVID defence. I was well, the same day I became the people's lawyer. I was on the promenade and they, I was lifted. I was de-arrested in three minutes, so I can't get conversation. It's a bugger. Um, and um, de-arrested in three minutes, and they, um, they came round just within, the, just before the six months time limit expired. They've got to serve some kind of paperwork within six months, and they served it. They came round and they're whispering, uh, put it through the letterbox. Uh, first they said, you need to accept this. When, when you hear these people say you need, then what they mean is we need you. You need to accept. Uh, no, thank you. On your bike. Um, and whisper, whisper, whisper. Put it under the door, put it under the door. You know, pathetic. But it was a notice of criminal charge. Notices are offers to contract. It wasn't a criminal charge. It was the offer to accept a criminal charge. Yeah? which I don't obviously, and I wrote to them saying, thanks for the offer, but no thanks. I, I made an eight page project of it, because I wanted to show them the error of their ways, and list all the crimes that they're committing, including the court manager, the magistrate, anyone that's involved in this case against me. It wasn't just me, there were three of us. But I'm, I'm the one that's had and whenever they invite me to court, just don't go. Why would I go? It's not my arena, it's their arena. And I've said, if you do insist on me coming, it will be £20,000 for a special appearance. So you charge out, because I'm my own representative, and I charge out as a barrister would. So it'd be, you know, three grand a minute, or three grand for ten minutes, or whatever. Um, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm redefining everything. Everything. Let's do, including family. My blood family, there's a massive chasm now. There's a Covid chasm. So my new family are freedom, freedom operatives. Let's translate. You are required by law. You, we weren't taught English grammar. You is not singular, it's plural. You, the collective you. What's the singular for the second person in English? Thou. Thou. Yeah? So you, so you can't contract with a group of unknown individuals. So are required. Look at Bouvier's online law dictionary or Black's 5th edition. Required means requested. Can't be mean required because we know that without a contract, there's nothing doing. It's all business. By law, okay. Law, what law? They can never show you a law. They're talking about a contract that you've signed or that you've been duped into um, creating, co-creating by a process of joinder or signing acquiescence. Um, so, translating, some random group of individuals that we can't identify are requested by the law of contract. Are requested to, offer, to accept our offer to contract. That's what you have to do. You, know, you have to redefine everything. The beast has no teeth. The beast only has falses, dentures. Yeah? And if you go boom to the beast, the dentures fall out. And all they can do now is suck you to death. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's the law. Let's pick that one apart. It's the law, like the, that woman in the shop. It's the law, is it? Excuse me, it was guidelines over there and it was policy over there. By the time it gets to you, it's the law. Ah! Ooh, excuse me for laughing. Um, it's the law of contract. It's the principle of contract. It's business. You redefine it. It's our corporate policy. It's our business procedure. <coughs> it's the pantomime that we're currently running. Delete where applicable. Your remedy. I've identified four remedies for what I call systemic narcissism, because that's what it is. The narcissist, I used to have a whole screen about narcissism. Narcissist, for the narcissist, you can tell no truth, you can do no right, and you don't exist. Familiar anyone? Local government, you can do no, you, know, you can tell no truth. They always assume you're lying. 
You don't exist. Because you don't exist. If you run the legal person, you don't exist. Oh! Hopefully that's the last one. Right, where was I on the card? <laughs> e by gum. Right, I'm giving away my northern roots there. Uh, right, we're on number three. <clears throat> um, are you, okay, this one I love. Are you here on the road? So, this, on the other hand, I've got a hero, heroic friend called Courtney. Does anyone know who I'm referring to? Courtney, yeah. Great guy. Uh, and he, he's got a pal called Paul. Well, I use pal loosely, cause, but Paul is a police constable. And, uh, and they know each other very well. It's not a big place, Alaman. So, Paul has been given, Courtney's a naughty boy, a freedom fighter, dissident, and Paul has been sent along to make Courtney's day miserable. But Courtney has been instructed by yours truly in some of the ways and means of standing up to, to police tyranny. So, you know, he's got his card or whatever his notes he's made, and Paul said, right, Courtney, where are you going? What are you doing? You know, who are you with and all that, you know? Uh, and Courtney just stays nice and calm and says, um, Paul, are you here um, facing me as a constable under oath? Well, yeah, you know I am, Courtney. Well, in that case, he goes, um, we do not recall summoning you. You're therefore dismissed and free to go. And Paul goes, oh, fuck it, right? And he has to go. <coughs> That's how it's done, folks. I know you don't need to do it in Stroud yet. Okay, and I hope you never do. But just in case, that's how you do it. You establish their position as constable, which means they're under oath to serve you. If you didn't... Sorry? Yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, don't let them. Constable covers them all. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't give them a, an officer rank. Yeah, I'm not a constable. I'm a sergeant. No, you're a constable, and you're a constable because I'm your employer and master, and I say what you are right now. All right? Do I? Do you understand me? Yeah. You've got you've got to do something that you were never allowed to do at school, which is to be the boss. Yeah? You've got to learn to be the boss. Now, I know that, you know, if you're married, especially if you're a plum, you've got a boss. <laughs> right? And occasionally, okay, the other way around, if you're a wife, you've got a boss. But, so you do have experience of being a but out in the public arena, it's a bit different. We're a bit more diffident out there. Um, so, yes. Establish their... Oh, I've always start to go over so great things are getting better. <laughs> <laughs> this is entrainment, isn't it? You know? Yeah? It'll start menstruating at the same time as some of you women <laughs> at the moment. Right. Um, so number four is if 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 they won't accept the uh, constable status. This, then you just say, it's clear that you are here as a corporate policy enforcement agent, but we do not consent and we do not wish to contract with you. Thank you. I was going to say, I've seen lots of videos of people saying, are you standing on your own? And please just to answer. In that case, you, you, you continue. You, yeah, you boss the situation by establishing that they're there as. Corporate policy enforcement agents, yeah. Oh, oh, right, well, I see what it's done. I still have to find the right file. Oh, yeah, looking recent. No. File open. Anyone would think that I, you know, I'm so calm under these circumstances. Anyone would think that it happened to me before, <laughs> wouldn't you? Right, so um, here we go. Four remedies for systemic narcissism. Do not contract. So that means sign nothing. Don't give them joinder. Okay? And make sure that you respond t in a timely manner so that they don't operate the principle of silent acquiescence. Number two uh, remedy, remain above their rules and policies. We'll go through how you activate this in a minute. Number three, use the power of the question. And number four, go private. Okay, so let's crack on the detail. 
So, uh, no contract means within 72 hours return to sender. And then there's a slide later on which teaches you how to, what to put on the front of their envelope. That's, that's a very good question. Like if, uh, oh, yeah. sorry. You were so close, I couldn't see you. <laughs> if uh, if um, you've sort of gone on the silent acquiescence, can you then rectify that once you're aware of it? If they, uh, if they pursue the silent acquiescence. You, you, you can, yeah, nothing, because equity knows no time. And equity trumps law. So you step back into equity. Equity has to see justice done. So the answer is yes. But these rules are rules of commerce, very low down the, the pecking order. But it's the rules that the government abide by and try and thrust, throw down your, thrust down your throat. Yeah? Um, so, no contract. Uh, if you're outside of the 72 hours, then use conditional acceptance or data subject access re request in combination. Now, this, uh, you'd have to go on my website, find some samples, uh, but you probably won't understand them, you know. So probably best to do the course. Um, you know, because you can't just, it's all very well, you may, you may comprehend the sample, but then what if there's, a response to it. How do you deal with the response? So that's why the course is important. Um, remedy number two, remain above their rules policies. How do you do that? How do you remain? Well, it's your consciousness is basically it. Um, by obeying the one and only true law. Here it is. Drum roll please. What is the one and only? Common law has got four principles. Do no harm, uh, cause no harm, loss, fraud or breach of the peace. But common law is the result of this one, it's the, it's the uh, trickling down from higher principle, cosmic or universal principle, be harmless. If you're operating the universal principle of harmlessness, and in particular self-harmlessness, you can do no wrong and you will be well and you will live, live long and prosper. It's as simple as that. By being or remaining harmless, no one is above you at law. Because at law, you, you are in your divinity. When you're harmless, and in particular self-harmless, which means that you're, you're avoiding the desecration or self-desecration of the Holy Land, then whew, you breathe better, you sleep better, your thoughts are more, more coherent. You are open to more truth. You can tell the difference between a lie and truth. So when someone says it's the law, you go, ha, gotcha. Yeah? Um, number two, you also retain your innate mastery. What's mastery? Who's the master here? I'm a master. Did I go to university to get a master's? Did I bother it? I was born a master. And so are you, because we're all equal under universal law. How do you know that I'm a master and that you're a master? Because you were born. That's how you prove your mastery. It's a mastery of existence. Squeezing a soul and a spirit, which is huge, into a tiny little fetal thingy, yeah? That's a major feat. There's a kind of a play on words there. Feet, feet, no. That's a major feat of... of existential mastery. Now I know I'm saying it light heartedly, but, but that's, that is, so you are evidence of your mastery, and I'm evidence of my mastery. Yeah? So, in fact, they are below you, so they're not only they're not above you, they're below you, because they're just, go, they're just creations, fictions. So they're either your creation, because man, I used to have a pyramid of this, you know, we have prime creator, man, government. And I think I should put it back, actually, because it, it shows the, um, the pyramid of power. I'll put it back, you know. Um, so, the pyramid of power. PC, prime creator, man. So, that's man's, yeah, so man is owned and controlled by prime divinity. But that's not a problem, because, you know, divinity is partly us, so we're owning and controlling ourselves. 
Um, and then we create government. Well, we create a government, so therefore we own and control it. But government has got ideas above its station, because it's gone corporate, and it's got CEOs. And those CEOs are only answerable to stakeholders, not to men and women. So they've kind of sidestepped us. Um, but you are, they're below you as a government or corporate agent. So you are their master, and they are your servant if they are truly government. Otherwise, what are you, if, if, you're, if they're corporate and they're providing a service, what could you describe you, yourself as? Customer. What do they say about customers? Always right. Always right. So we've got master status proven by, our, by being born alive, squeezing ourselves into a body. Amazing stuff. You know? No one discusses this. Do you remember at school discussing your mastery and the teacher saying, you know, it's remarkable, Rachel, how when you were born that you squeezed such a huge soul into such a tiny body. Could you tell us how it feels to be a master of existence, Rachel? Uh, I don't recall any conversations like that at school. Rachel, you're talking too much. Get outside. Uh, I do recall conversations like that. Right. Um, so that's how they turn a master into, yeah? Boss it about, punish it, ridicule it, humiliate it, give it lines, give it detention, give it a, isolate it, yeah? Separate it from its peers, make it compete with them. Oh, I'm, I'm putting the, um, I've got education Tourette's, they have to bear with me, you know, every time I think of an education thing, I just start reeling off all these horrendous things that go on in school, you know? Um, but remember the other true status that they hide from us, well, it's, remember the other one from the trust funds, what was our original status? Yeah, and also in the cosmic triangle, so we are, yeah, there you go, beneficiary, so we are master, who is law, when you're coherent and in alignment with the principle of non-harm, or harmlessness and no and self harmlessness, I should say. You're the customer who's always right, or you're the beneficiary who is the value, the value that was created, that was invested in as a kind of insurance on, on its uh, birth, and it never pays. Beneficiaries don't pay, they receive benefits. So if you are one, two, or three of those, what are you doing paying bills and fines and taxes and God? None of those pay bills. There's a story about a master who was in court, master of um, martial arts, and um, the, uh, the legal clerk said, could we have your name please? It was a speeding offence. They said, yes, my name is Master Lu. And they said, well, case dismissed, we can't hear cases against masters here, so off you go. There you go, so the master is, a, that, that was their way of saying, you're the law, we're not law, we're administrative processors. Yeah, we're doing business. Your law, if you're a master, yeah, then you are law. The law is above us. We're just policy enforcement agents. Customer always right. So if, if you go into a shop and they, and they say, where's your mask? Hang on a minute. I'm a customer. Aren't I always right? Whatever I do must be right. That's another way of looking at it. You don't need to know any law. I'm a customer. I'm always right. What are you doing? Beneficiary, value, never pays. Council tax bill, excuse me, I'm a beneficiary, I don't, I'm not recommending you do that, right? Again, it's, it, it could be sectionable, right? But I'm just giving you like a, a, a sort of, a version of, of truth to join some dots. You know, you are the beneficiary. I'm, in, I'm, I'm encouraging you to see things from a different perspective. Obviously, you're gonna have to uh, study a bit more to work out the actual strategy to deal with these idiots, okay? But the whole point is that they are bleeding you dry when they should be providing. 1880, I will give you some legal clues right now. 1888 Government Act, so Local Government Act, 1888, Section 79, Subsection 2, says that all liabilities of the inhabitants of the council are liabilities of the council. 
translating that means that if um, they need to um, do refuse collection or build anything, it's their responsibility. If they create any liability in your name, it's their responsibility to cover it. Now that was the original Honourable Local Government Act 1888. But along came the Local Government Finance Act 1992 and all of a sudden you weren't an inhabitant, you were a person. Persons liable to council tax. But now that you know that you're not a person, another reason to stop paying council tax. I, did I say stop paying council tax? Of course I didn't. It's not. It won't. It'll be edited out, won't it? You know. You know. But but the point is that. All right. Let me be more serious for a moment. By being a dutiful citizen and um, and a compliant taxpayer and bill payer, you are funding the cabal. So think of it that way. When you go home and think, plan a restructuring, you know, you're like a mini global reset, your own little micro reset, you know. Think about that. Are there lots of people who are paying their capital tax? Tons, thousands, tens of thousands. Absolutely. Yeah, and because people like me are showing them the correctness of it morally, in equity, at law, in commerce, because they are masters, beneficiaries, and customers. And because their laws tell them that it's wrong. The Local Government, sorry, Local Government Act 1888, Section 79 2 says, councils can't charge you. They've got to cover your liability. The problem is, councils also incorporated, like, gov like national government did. So now they're operating another paradigm. But there's always answers to every, every, whatever they create, we can uncreate. So where is the obligation to do any of the following? Answer questions, take a test, take an injunction, wear a mask, fill out a form. I was another anecdote, I have to give you these anecdotes, I know it kind of holds us up a bit, but, but I think it helps cement the uh, principle. Seven years ago, I was, uh, I was up to seven years ago, I was running a company that went to schools, to do this instruction of a card game that led me to write the book. The, the, because, and it was so successful that, the, the, that I was defunded. Now you think, hey, how's that? You were so successful you were defunded. Because I was threatening to change the entire school paradigm. Because it was all about fun and interaction and playfulness and child autonomy. Yes? It took the teachers out of the equation. Hoo hoo, can't have that. So I was defunded. So now I'm, I'm potless, no income coming in, but the Inland Revenue still think I'm running a company or that I'm, I'm going to be a good boy and fill out their tax return. So they started fining me for no non-filing. Did some research and I realised, hang on, I've got, I haven't got a contract anymore. That was last year. My last contract was last year. Every year is, is a new year. So I just said, um, no, I've gone private, thank you. And... Um, there's no, I won't be in touch because um, I'll be just doing my, I'm paraphrasing, it was, I didn't write a very eloquent letter because I didn't know what, then what I know now, but I knew enough to know that they were offering me some kind of contract and I wasn't having any of it. And so they wrote back uh, a few weeks later, cancelling all the penalties that were up to a thousand pounds, zeroed them out and I've got a laminated copy of that letter um, and um, they've not been in touch since and that was seven years ago. So don't be, don't be scared, folks, you know, you're the boss. Um, so there's no obligation to fill out a form. Tax return is, again, if you don't sign anything, if you don't complete anything or sign it, in other words, that's, that's, they got the clear message that I wasn't sending them any documentation. And I know that there's no obligation to send. The obligation starts when you sign it or when you comply with a request to send it, yeah, send it back. If you want to tease them, you fill it in, but you don't sign it. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, can only, you can only be prosecuted for self-incrimination. And that's true of most crimes, actually. Most crimes are the result of self-incrimination, particularly financial crimes. So, where's the obligation to keep social distance, stay at home, close your business? pay taxes and fines, no obligation. 
You may decide that it's your civic duty to do all of those things. Well, that's up to you. But there's no obligation to do any of them. That's, that's my message. I'm not saying do them or don't do them. I'm just saying if you do them, you do them. But you don't have to do them. Yeah? Remember, no signature means no express contract. And no joinder means no implied contract. Uh, no joinder or silent acquiescence, it should say, so I need to add that. And remember, no contract means no obligation. I didn't sign or fill in a tax return, so there was no contract because there was no contract, no obligation, which is why I've not been in touch since. Where is the obligation to assist police with inquiries? Rice versus Connolly. There's none. None whatsoever. Enforcement is just like the legal fiction person, it's a figment of our collective imagination. Ment, as I said before, is the Latin for mind, mente. So they're forcing something into your mind. It's threats, coercion, intimidation, blackmail. No job, no job. Yeah? Just <coughs> mind games. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't take, get a job, you won't be sacked, but if you know what you're doing, you're going to get piles of compensation because no jab, no job is completely unlawful. Yeah? And who would want to work for a dick that won't employ you unless you self-harm? There's no other... Look, I'm a northerner. I've got to put it as it is. Yeah? Bloody yeah. hell. That's Northerners' contribution to road safety, folks. <laughs> Only three officers. Oh, this is the answer to um, the original question about uh, who can get into your home without your consent. Only three officers can force entry in civil matters. Civil, not criminal. And they must always have a warrant. And COVID is always a civil matter, by the way. Always. Never criminal. Okay, if they're alleging that you're in breach of the peace, that's different. If they're alleging that you're committed some kind of public order offence or you're a mental health job, different. But if you're rational, peaceful, calm, non-threatening, non-abusive, non-violent, civil matter. Um, and these are High Court writ of repossession, Sheriff High Court writ of repossession. Uh, that's the bank repossessing. Uh, county court warrant for repossession, that's your landlord because the tenant defaulted, and a gas agent when there's a gas leak. Nobody else ever. Certainly no one with a COVID problem. <coughs> we have reason to suspect that your son gathered more than 30 persons. If you don't open, we'll kick the door in. On your back. We need to have some phrases that remind them of who we are and who they are. You know? Someone came up with a classic the other day. I love this. He let the, the police officer in who's like with riot gear on steam, let off some steam. And then he just uh, turned, he just cocked his head like this and said, You feel better now? <laughs> and the police officer just walked off. <laughs> Diffuse it with a, with a, you know, cool, calm, and collected. Do you feel better now? Yeah? You've let off a bit of steam, you know? So keep your cool. Don't take things personally. They're just doing a job. Third round in law, use the power of the question. If it's verbal, answer a question with a question. Or just say, I don't answer questions. Yeah? <coughs> in writing, use conditional acceptance, stroke the data subject access request. Um, Okay, so that's one way of keeping them at bay. Uh, remedy in law number four, go private. So this is the re, 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 uh, return to sender, because now you're protecting the Holy Land. A lot of these windowed envelopes do contain a, a form of dark magic, a form of energetic issue, you know? You open the envelope and you already feel a bit jittery. You, you actually, you can feel jittery just seeing it plop on the floor, you know? And you're cursing the postman and you think, no, it's not the postman's problem, he's doing the job. But maybe we should be pointing out to the post people that they are aiding and abetting. They're aiding and abetting um, 
mail fraud. Return for cause without dishonour in commerce. So you write at 45 degree angle, two crosses, uh, sorry, uh, two lines at 45 degree angle in blue, bottom left to top right, and then you put return to sender, then return for cause, and the cause is that it's mail fraud. Without dishonour means you've done it within 72 hours in commerce. No lawful consent, no legal contract, offer to contract a client, and I did it recently with a PCN, and I've not heard, that was five weeks ago, I've not heard back. Protect your home, put a private by appointment only, notice up. So if you're going to take boys and girls out of school, make sure you put one of those up, so that the meddlesome social workers and education officials cannot knock on your door. If they knock on your door, you say, excuse me, do you not see that sign? Which sign? Just read it. Oh, that one. Private by appointment only. Have you got an appointment? No. Well, I think I've been through this. Would you like one? Yeah, of course we would. Well, it costs you 25 grand. Thank you. So you do business, but you do business more with more savvy than, you know. It's going to put them off. They won't come again. They haven't got 25 grand. It's an economic crisis. Protect your business. Create a private, okay, so if the, this is more, more, well, no, it's all serious in a way, but if there's a, when there's another lockdown, you have to keep on doing your business. And if people, you know, especially the ditherers, just say, look, um, if, you, if you're anxious and nervous, shut your door, put a privacy notice up, and have your customers or patrons come in as patron, men and women, by appointment, or by special invitation, or by a code, or just knock, you know, it's like, Halt who goes there, friend or foe. You know, the old fashioned. I mean, that's where it came from. Halt who goes there, friend or foe. That's where we're going back to. Yeah? I mean, people who just, they hear a knock on the door and they just answer it. Hello, who's that? I mean, beggars belief, you just don't do that in Manchester anymore. You know? <laughs> you just don't. Um, use trust and trust law. Um, somebody was mentioning over the dinner table that they've got um, uh, someone that knows about trust creation. So this is where people are heading to protect specific assets like vehicles and homes. Uh, for a vehicle, a simple declaration of trust that you register with the um, DVLR. So you create, if you're a dissident that's worried about their car being confiscated, you, you, um, you find a trusted friend or relative you put the car in, in, the, in a trust and they're the trustee, so they become the legal owner. You're now the beneficial user. So if you get stopped, then the, the police look up the records, it's the name of the trustee on the DVLR records. DVLA, sorry. Not your name. So they can't take the car because it's not yours legally. For example, <coughs> okay, part four, the ultimate parts won't take very long. I know it's late. Is everyone okay to do the last two bits? Yeah? I mean, you can always walk if you're not okay, but it doesn't look right, does it? No. <coughs> um, how, how about crawling? <laughs> okay. No, we're right. It won't take long, I promise. Okay. Um, learn to love yourself is the ultimate antidote. It's all very well to know all this stuff, this lawful legal bits, and it's great, and it will stand you in good stead. But if you still hate your own guts, you're not going to activate it because you won't feel motivated. You won't feel worthy of it. This is truth. You won't feel worthy of truth. If someone says, open the door, you'll have such a low self-esteem and so much anxiety, you'll open the door. If someone says, pay this bill or pay this fine or we'll see you in court, you'll just trot along, you know, because you haven't got enough self-love. This is the resilience package. Self-love. And also, what do you think the phrase charity begins at home means? It means if you don't love yourself, you can't love anyone else. If, there's, if the tank is empty, you can't give anyone a lift, I think. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look after the Holy Land. So if self-love is a little bit, feels a bit unattainable right now, then start to show signs of it which is to self-nourish, self-nurture, self-protect. Avoid bad narcissistic company. Speak more truth, be more self-assertive. Be ruder and more impolite. 
If it hasn't quite worked, then be apologetic. But it usually will work, you know? So politeness is corrosive. It's really corrosive, you know? Like, and self-deprecation, putting yourself down. You learnt it at school to avoid being bullied. Don't do it, it's carcinogenic, you know? <clears throat> Right, six guarantees of health. Get all these right and you will be well in 99.9% .9 of all cases. Wim Hof deep breathing or just fresh air. Oxygenate, fresh air, keep the windows open. You know, so get outdoors as much as possible, basically. Hydrate, put salt in your water, not, not table salt. Sea salt or Himalayan rock salt, pink salt, because it will give you the um, electrolytes. I take sips of saline lemon solution every day. Now, if you looked at my itinerary, most of you would faint. I mean, I'm all over the country constantly. Actually, sometimes I faint, I've got to be honest. Well, there you go. But it's, it looks undoable, but I think one of my secrets is saline solution. Nutrition. Go to the average supermarket. When I go into spa or co-op or whatever, other supermarkets are available, um, I don't see any nutrition. I see tons of food, but no nutrition. None. None. And that's why we're always hungry, because we're feeding ourselves, but the body's not receiving the message that it wants is, hello, have you got any nutrition for me, please? I don't need food, I need nutrition. So, work out the nutrition for you, obviously. Well, there's some other tips on the next screen. Um, physical detox. We're all so toxic that you need to do a physical detox. So you can cheat, 24 hour water fast gets you underway. Intermittent fasting, that'll be on the next screen as well. Uh, where you just don't eat for 12 to 16 or 18 hours every day. So you're getting a regular, Ooh, it's raining. Get a regular detox so you can cheat. So you never need to do a full on detox, which can be unpleasant. You go into a healing crisis, you know. They say that a three day water fast is an, is an, it serves as an immune reboot. So do a 12 hour water, well, no, do a 24 hour water fast. Yeah? That's what I've done. Build it up. Take it easy if you're not used to fasting. Just take it very gently. This, this is not medical advice. These are things that I've done myself. You know? Not everybody can do what everybody else can do, but you have to experiment. <clears throat> uh, emotional release, again, I hinted at it before. You don't want to take the baggage into the new earth because it won't fit. There's no customs agents, no customs officers. Right? Okay? Got any baggage? Yes, well, go back and sort it. That's what we'll be saying at the gates of the new earth. Um, gentle exercise. If whatever exercise you do, if you can't do it with a smile on your face, stop it. Right? You see all these runners and cyclists. <laughs> like chewing a lemon. Right? And they're just, it's that stress. They're causing themselves stress. Uh, the people's lawyer tips, eat less and eat organic. Well, even organic food isn't that organic very often, but um, have I put vitamins? Oh, I have at the bottom. Take very, very high quality vitamins and supplements. But don't just, but, but research, take some advice from a naturopath or nutritionist on which is the best for you, because we're all different. Intermittent fasting, I've covered it, something that I do, keeps me energetic keeps my weight down, keeps me in the flow. We don't need anywhere near as much food as they. This three square meals a day, that's cabal nonsense. One square meal a day and a bit of uh, saline solution, bit of fruit, bit of yogurt on top, a few nuts, bit of seaweed, nuts, seeds. <coughs> blood type eating. Now, I'm blood type A+, plus. I can be vegan. In fact, I should be vegan. I am. But if you're blood type O, you can't be vegan. So A, B and B, don't know, it's a grey area. But you have to do your own research, due diligence, find out. Yeah? 
Now that you know what you didn't know, it's the rest. It's up to you. Uh, fulfill yourself. Find your ishigai, your passion, your vocation, your mission. Right. Everyone is born with a passion, even if it's a passion for doing sod all. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're born with it, and that passion for doing bugger all is 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 like a Zen quality. And the way we've been micromanaged, you know, you rock up at someone's, ha uh, someone's home at Thursday afternoon at two o'clock, and they freak out and they're, hang on, you're not in my diary. You know, um, we've, we've been micromanaged, so now we micromanage our own life. Spontaneity is gone. I did a, a workshop for teens the other day, it was hilarious, because the average age was about six, but they were meant to be teenagers. But there were some teens as well. And I said, <laughs> I said, um, anyone know, anyone heard the word spontaneous? So it's been taken out of the school curriculum. So I thought, hang on, I'm on a roll here. Has anyone heard the word propaganda? <laughs> and some of them were, you may think I was taking the mic out of them, I wasn't. You, it, some of them were, def half of them were definitely old enough to have heard of the word propaganda. Absolutely, they were th 13 to 18, right? <coughs> but I, I'll forgive the six-year-olds for, for not having heard that word, right? And um, so if they take the word propaganda out of the school curri curriculum, that means the government can't be lying. See what they're doing, yeah? So they take the word propaganda out and they put the word masturbation in. And they teach masturbation to four-year-olds. So they won't teach propaganda to 16-year-olds, but they'll teach masturbation to four-year-olds. Welcome to 2021. Right, so you're born with a passion. You've got a passion. I can guarantee you've got a passion. Everybody loves something or loves to do something. So you dream when you're younger of, of being it, of being a version of it or nurturing it so it becomes a vocation. If you develop the skill and people see the value in it, then it's your mission. And finally, <clears throat> they'll reward you and it's your unique contribution. Now that used to be profession, but since we're in a new paradigm, profession is more the old way. So it's unique contribution to, to the community, to the family, the true family. Okay, so I'm encouraging people to think job, employment, drudgery, repetition, no passion, that's the old ways. So you plot, you've got to plan, you can't just escape out of trance, you've got to plot your escape first. <coughs> yes? Plot it, plan it. What am I going to do when I, not if I quit, but when I quit? Yeah? And there's plenty. The new movement needs so many people with so many skills. You may take a dip in salary, but so what? Yeah? So what? You'll be a thousand times happier, a thousand times healthier, and you won't even think about the dip in salary. <coughs> um, if you want to know more about who you really are and what, what your potential contribution is, then I can personally recommend, and I'm going to study this over the winter, uh, Gene Keys by Richard Rudd, and if you go on genekeys.com, you can get your profile numbers, and if you go on the website, you can find out what your gifts are, how you can open your heart, and how you can achieve prosperity through service. Remember, the matrix was all about self-service, and financial reward for self-service. <coughs> but the new paradigm will be um, some kind of reward, Normally people's appreciation or the return of a service with a service or a good or an offer, whatever. And everyone's feeling warm and yummy because we're all doing, we're all working from the heart. We're not working because we're on a hamster wheel. And you'll get the prosperity. I mean, when I was, when I, when I was engaged with the, with the matrix, I was always struggling. Now I've pulled out of the matrix and I'm serving the people. I, I, every time I look in my bank account, I've spent maybe two grand, 
So I think my bank account should be two grand less. It's three grand more because I'm doing the course and people are feeding my bank account because they're paying for the course. And it's like, I can't spend, it's, it's bizarre. It, when I was in the old paradigm, I couldn't create credit. I was always in debt. And now I can't spend it. It's like, it, it's weird. Because I, I'm creating prosper, prosperity through service. I'm not, I don't do what I do for financial reward. I do what I do because people need to know what I know. But in return, you know, I couldn't survive yet with no finance, so I have to charge something, yeah? But if somebody said to me, and some people have said to me, right, in return for your course, I will make you uh, a, um, I will crochet you God knows what, or I'll paint you a painting. Deal. You see what I mean? It doesn't have to be, but people are still in the old paradigm, and it doesn't occur to them to offer me an exchange. It does to one or two, but not many. Don't, don't all of you do it, man. Like, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, we need to do a bit of reprogramming. I am law, five times a day until kingdom come. I am law, that's the master. Five times. Why five times? Because the first three create the truth, and the second two could be, I've got this maybe the wrong way around. But the first, or three of them create truth, the rule of three, and two of them help you undo the lie. Yeah, so it's the five gives you the heavyweight realignment, reprogramming. I am law, I am value, times five. I am truth, times five. I've been doing my own mantras for years now, and I suspect that um, it created a bubble in which the people's lawyer stepped. It created a bubble for the people's lawyer to step into. Yeah? So, start the reprogramming, you know, um, and go back to school and you're no longer three feet tall in your mind, intimidated by a teacher, where you have been, why are you late, why have you not done your homework, and you're not saying, well, you're not answering the question either with a truth or a lie, you're, you're answering a question with a question, excuse me miss, excuse me sir, what's it got to do with you, this is a private matter, um, homework is, would be done in my... I decided to do something far more worthwhile and creative and creative and in alignment with my true passions. And where I've been, again, is a private matter, none of your business, and by the way, your lessons are shite. <laughs> so, you've got a complete audacity questioning me. I should be questioning you on why they pay you 35 grand <laughs> to teach shite. <laughs> Be conscious of the power of I am, that's the, that's the divinity, divinity revealing itself. I am that I am. So if you follow I am with anything less than I am pure divine source love, or I am truth, I am law, I am value, I am um, an eternal spirit living, or whatever, you know, if you say I'm a bit knackered today, then you're self-desecration. Even I am British, it's, a, it's, it's you limiting yourself. I am pure divine, so I have a British nationality. We're going to have to re de redefine how we speak. I, I make these, I'm still making these mistakes, and I have to correct myself, but I've got the awareness to, to correct myself, to correct myself. Um, other languages don't have the same problem. Like, you can say in this, you can be hungry in, in English. Well, how can you be hungry? You can feel hungry. You can have hunger in French. Avoir faim is to have hunger. Oop, there you are. Um, we're almost at the end, so I can wing it. I can, I can give it you um, orally. So, you know, you can. We don't distinguish in English between permanence and temporal or temporary states. So, if you're talking about temporary state of sleepiness, tiredness, fed, fed upiness, then use feel, thirst, yeah. Em embarrassed, pissed off, I feel a bit embarrassed. And in, in the more conscious circles, they do encourage you to say, how are you feeling? Yeah, not how are you, yeah? I'm minded to, to suggest to people, n not to ask how are you, but how are you being? Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're nearly there. Uh, how are you being? Which makes it more temporary. 
Um, right, the last section, which I don't, I'm not going to put on screen, is all about um, future proofing. So, are you ready for the future? Are you ready for the shenanigans that's going to take place soon? The apparent shortage of food. It won't be real, there's tons of food. Well, maybe not much nutrition, but tons of food. Right? Are you prepping? Are you putting some are you putting some food away? Are you are you creating networks, supportive networks, for when um, if you're surrounded by the compliant and they decide that it's you that's ruining their lives and threatening them? That they literally, you know, they either come for you or they um, snitch on you and you get collected and taken away to a FEMA camp. These are nightmare scenarios which are, almost certainly won't take place. But we have to be, um, we have to be cautious, not too smug, and have to take advantage of the fact that we have pot potential and actual allies who will look after us and will start. You know, exchange, exchanging and cooking for each other. I've already left my old paradigm, which was an apartment in Manchester, where I was le were leading a semi-corporate lifestyle. I've never been completely corporate, but semi. And now, and also I was getting visits by the police trying to drag me off to court. So I was thinking, okay, now's the time to go nomadic. To meet my true family, stay out of range of these rogue police, not real police, Stay out of range and um, and just have a life. Get in, get in the in the on the motorway of life. Get in the fast lane. Yeah. So, if you're feeling, you may get the call to at least prepare to pack some bags and be prepared to move. You may get the call. It won't be a mobile phone that calls you. It will be an internal voice that says, "Time to go." And you look around at your neighbours and you think, you know, they're a potential threat. You know, there'll be clues when they keep asking you, have you not been jabbed yet? Yeah? If you keep being asked by your neighbours whether you've been jabbed, pack your bags. Okay? Or keep a, keep a BDI on, on proceedings. Um, what else is in the last two screens? Uh, yeah, networking. Standing in the park. Do you, are you all standing in the park? Yeah. Please stand in the park. But that's there's, there's been an evolution. We you now we now have roundabout parties with banners and motorists will toot their horn. So please consider roundabout parties, especially if there's another lockdown. Roundabout parties, holding the line where you line up along an A road or a B road even, and literally hold hands. Yeah. So we need strategies to maintain the, the optic that there are many, many millions who don't agree with the current paradigm. Yeah. So finally, a bit of promotion. Um, there's a book on sale. The uh, school no place for children, fifteen pounds. Uh, there is a privacy course which I've mentioned many times, but it's a very, but you access to it is through the website. Ask for information. You can read most about it on the website itself, like the uh, course content is on the website. Um, but you actually activate your enrollment by making a personal approach to me, because I'm keeping it private. If you want to know the secret of online privacy, it's um, you don't have a pay now button, and if you do, it must be in a members section. So you either have simple bank to bank dealings you know, individual to individual, which keeps it private, or you have a member section and the pay now button is behind that curtain. But if you're still in the public, you can't, you know, you're potentially vulnerable to, oh, and my word. Good, good eve. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting more and more, bloody hell. Um, <laughs> hang on, uh, four hours. It actually, and it's come back even further than it normally does. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Me, 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 me. Right, here we go. Um, just in case I've missed anything out. Um, oh, yeah, the thymus thumb. I am pure divine source love. Okay, let me, uh, hang on. Shift F5. 
one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so, um, like the primates, I am pure divine source, love, I am pure divine source, love. You don't have to say, you don't have to say anything, you just thump yourself in the morning, not too hard, you know. Um, and on the other side as well, so it's, and the, the gorillas will do both, I mean, you know, and make a funny sound, you know, like Tarzan, you know. Tarzan needs to be in good condition, otherwise he'll lose grip of one of the branches, won't he, and he'll come a cropper, right? Uh, so, the thump um, resets the thymus, which is your, a source of um, immune cells, and it balances out your, um, your meridian energy. So it's, it's an important little procedure. So there's a lot of homework, I don't like that word homework, because I, I asked the kids that, what do you understand by homework? And I got them to say, oh, that doesn't sound right, does it? The way you put it, David. You know, it sounds like work that we take home. So, I need another phrase. Play, home play, play, play time, play, yeah? So play. Right, let's see what else is there. Uh, be yourself, as Oscar Wilde said, because everyone else is taken. Uh, glimpse of the future. Oh yeah, going to be two worlds. There's going to be a smart world, we can't avoid that. Well, so we can avoid that, but we can't avoid them creating it. Uh, and the natural world, that's the world that we'll be living in. The smart world will be run by artificial intelligence for narcissists, sociopaths and psychopaths. The smart world will be all about service to self which we know, the natural world, there'll be no lawyers, no teachers, no doctors, no counters, no therapists, split the and rapists, the rapists, no jobs, you don't want a job, jobs will be a thing of the past in this new paradigm. Natural world will be all about service to others, barter, exchange and gift, more joy, more spontaneity. Prepping, we've looked at, build community, mutual support. So all the things you learned at school, you've got to reverse them now. It was all about competition and stepping over someone to get to that job. Now it's about collaboration, cooperation, generosity. You, know, you give, give to one person, 10 people will give you back. I promise you. Just give. Just start giving randomly. You'll get it back tenfold. I promise you. If, if it doesn't work, come and see me. If you can find me. <laughs> there you go, stand in the park, roundabout parties, hold the line, get contact details. See, you should never go to a group and not come home with contact details, you know, of several people, you know. And then build a, 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 a telegram presence, a group that's, you know, that's uh, freedom, uh, well, freedom from tyranny, Stroud or whatever. You know, you name it, whatever you want. Um, book I've talked about, the course I've talked about, and the website is thepeopleslawyeruk.com. Um, the website is on your card and it's on that leaflet. Um, so there you go. Thank you very much.